be nice if you can take the challenge. So they, those came from, but they were a little bit modified. Those came from the 40-day Love Dare Challenge, uh, inspired by the movie or the film Fireproof. And you can uh, purchase the book Love There. It's a, actually a workbook. Love There uh, at the Philippine Christian Bookstore. When I was at Ayas, we challenged the faculty and staff there to do the 40 day, well, actually, we, we shortened it to just seven days Love There challenge. And they were very happy about it. So we would also want to challenge the married couples here, if you can do the love there. Now, um, well, I'm, I'm not planning to be a guru when it comes to this topic. But uh, it so happened na medyo nagkaroon po tayo ng challenge kung sino ang gustong mag-tackle itong topic na ito. But anyway, so let me share with you the foundational, I consider them foundational. Uh, considerations in marriage and sexuality. So, yeah. Uh, wait, napasobra. What is intimacy? Uh, Dr. Dorado shared with you a good uh, introduction. Uh, in fact, some of those words that he mentioned, I uh, was considering of putting them, but it would uh, take some time, you know, you own, but some of those you know, concepts are in the presentation. But he, had a, he has given a good introduction with regard to intimacy. Because too often, intimacy is what? Connected with sex. So it says, uh, even though, as what he has mentioned, it is not just about sex. The lexical.com says, number one, it has something to do with close familiarity or friendship, or meaning be, uh, having closeness. Okay? The second one is too often the one being thought about, being considered, being looked at, uh, being assumed by many people. Let us consider, I have here some myths about intimacy and sexuality. Number one, Oh, yeah, number one myth is that yeah, intimacy is all about sex. And I have here five types of intimacy. Tama ba spelling ko Ayun, tama. I got this from psychcentral.com. Number one is emotional in intimacy. Again, we are seeing that intimacy is not just about sex. There are actually five types of intimacy. And the number one is emotional intimacy. And what is that? It's being able to, um, it's having the confidence of being vulnerable in front of your spouse. Especially with men, you know. Hindi mo iisipin na nawawala ang iyong pagkalalaki kapag magpakita ka ng vulnerability sa iyong spouse. With women, hindi ito masyadong problema sa mga babae. Pero with men, sometimes this becomes a problem. To, uh, to show some vulnerability sa asawa mo. Parang iniisip mo, parang baka eh, may, mawala yung respeto ng asawa ko sa akin kapag ka, nagpakita ko ng vulnerability. But it's not. But to be emotionally vulnerable, to, be, oh, to show emotional vulnerability means that you trust your spouse at naniniwala ka na because of the intimacy that you have, uh, hindi ka nag-aalala kung ipakita mo man sa kanya o paalam mo man sa kanya. Sabi nga ni Michael Giordano, Giordano, no? Sabi niya ganoon is, you know, it's about being able to talk to your spouse or special someone about your innermost thoughts. And then, he is actually uh, special, uh, he's, he specializes in couple sex therapy and non-traditional relationships in in uh, Washington, D.C. He said, you're able to share your joy and your pain with your partner. It's the person you can cry with. Sa mga lalaki po, natry nyo na po bang umiyak sa harapan ng asawa nyo and then uh, ipakita na uh, that part of your weakness. Ano? 
it's a big challenge uh, sa uh, maraming pagkakataon sa mga kalalakian. But again, I think women are a little bit good at this. You know? um, hindi, hindi, na, hindi na hihiya at natatakot ang mga kababayan tungkol sa bagay nito. The next one has something to do with intellectual intimacy. Now, yesterday I heard that with some groups, sinasabi nila, parang wala naman dun sa mga selection yung pinag-uusapan namin ng asawa ko. Sabi na lang ganyan. Actually, you cannot really say na dapat ito lang ang napag-uusapan and I really did not mean that in those uh, topics that you need to discuss with your spouse, like yung finances, and other stuff that was in the discussion questions last night. And we cannot say na, yung iba kasi pagka uh, ang, pinag- uh, ang nalaman nila, ang nadinig nila, ito yung pinag-uusapan ng mag-asawa, sinasabi nila, sa trabaho, yun na nga yung pinag-uusapan nila, hanggang sa bahay, ganun pa ba? Pero, to some of us, it may look weird, but to some, okay, the, the idea here is that if this brings you closer together, but wh- and why not? if this will bring intimacy between you and your spouse, uh, it may look weird to others, but if it works with the two of you, then why not? Ano? Uh, kaya ang sabi doon, this includes exchange of ideas and thoughts about things about you think and care about. For instance, to deepen your intellectual intimacy, you might share your favorite songs, poems, or books, and even things about work, especially if you have the same nature of work. You also might share your thoughts about life in general or your interests such as volunteering and places you'd like to travel. Okay, so that's again uh, from the, uh, that um, psychologist. Next one is experiential intimacy. Couples don't have to be, do everything together. Di ba may mga pagkakato naman, yun siyempre, mga lalaki, gusto nila makapag-basketball din, makapag-tennis, kasama yung friends nila. Even the women, try to imagine what if, you know, although I'm not saying it's wrong, and I'm not saying that this does not happen, yung minsan, uh, awkward sa iba, pero sa iba, okay. Pero generally, as I, uh, no, especially for me, parang hindi ako ganun comfortable, comfortable o comfortable na kami dalawa ng asawa ko ay sabay kami nagpapapedicure. Pagka sa mga kababayan, okay yun eh. That's bonding moment eh. Pero parang sa akin, parang hindi pa ako komportable sa ganung bagay na mga mga kikay staff. Ano? <laughs> kikay staff kay sabay namin gagawin ng asawa ko. Hindi rin, I also cannot expect my wife to do things with me na men would naturally do. Di ba? Uh, in a lot of times, may difference talaga eh. But, it doesn't mean that since you're not doing things together, eh, hindi na kayo intimate. But when you are, you have the opportunity, it's very important and it's very good that you are able to do things together. Nilagay ko doon, close parenthesis, without any distraction, such as electronic gadgets. I remember when I was in college here, I had a roommate. Inis na inis siya. Doon sa girlfriend niya, dahil may date sila at uh, hindi ko akalain na nung mga panahon na yun, nangyayari na pala yun. Na yung sweetheart niya, yung girlfriend niya, andun may ka-textmate at tawa ng tawa na silang magkasama pero iba ang kausap nung girlfriend niya. Parang sabi ko, iba yata yun ha. So, without distractions. For instance, if you like biking together, gardening together, or seeing a movie, or doing chores together. di ba uh, my father would of, always tell us, and especially to uh, my nephew, hindi nakakawala, nakakababa, nakakabawas ng pagkalalaki kung ikaw ay isang Canadian. Alam niyo yung Canadian citizen? O magsaing Canadian, maglaba Canadian. Pero it's also a good thing that you do that together. No? Kayong dalawa, naglalaba kayo, kayong dalawa, naguhugas kayo. Actually, uh, madalas nangyayari ito doon sa mga bagong kasal. Yung para kayo nagbabahay-bahayan, no, nagluluto kayong sabay, kumakayon kayong sabay, tapos uh, guhugas kayo ng plato sabay kahit dadalawa lang ang inuhugasan nyo. Di ba? Kasi dadalawa lang kayo eh. Okay. So, that's 
Again, in ex experiential intimacy. Okay, the next one is physical intimacy. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it, uh, it's the same as sex. Okay? Physical intimacy is not that all about uh, sexual intimacy, but may be part of it. Or sexual intimacy is part of physical intimacy. That's what I want to point out there. It is essentially being affectionate with each other, which can include everything from hugging to holding hands, kissing and cuddling on the couch. It's mean, that's you physical, you touch. And it doesn't have to always mean that it's sexual activity, okay? Uh, it's just being, I mean, be, uh, being together and then yung, uh, physically connected, being connected with each other. And last, which is also which is very important, is spiritual intimacy. These are the five intimacies, okay? And uh, uh, sa iba, uh, sa kanila ay, ito, there are some challenges with this aspect, with this one. But it's very important, especially to us Seventh-day Adventist Christians, that you get to have spiritual intimacy. Napakahalaga nun. That's why, in front of God, you are now one. Diba? Pinag-isa kayo ng Panginoon. And so, you also have to be one spiritually, not religiously. Again, being religious and spiritual is different. So, ganun po. Okay. The next thing that I want to bring to you, okay? Let, let's have a, uh, something like, uh, if you may call it, a short quiz about this. Ano? Or our trivia questions, or short quiz uh, about this, ano? All of this, the five types of intimacy should be experienced all together in order to fully achieve intimacy. What do you think? The answer is no. Uh, there are so many complexities in marital relationship and even in relationships between uh, siblings, parents, and children, even best friends, na hindi mo naman ma-achieve lahat yon, Okay? Does it mean na you don't achieve intimacy? No. However, it's also different when you consider, when you assume that this will happen naturally over time. Is it true or false? Again, it's false. Hindi yan, ano eh? Uh, hindi, even evolution does not work in uh, marital relationships or in relationships in general. It does not happen. Evolution. Ano nyo kung ano ibig sabihin? Uh, ito yung palagi kong question doon sa mga nagaano ng evolution. Try for example, ito lang, ito na lang. If I shake this one billion times, ganun. Do you think I can create an organism out of this? No. Okay, so just just basic about evolution. I don't think that I can create something if I sh start shaking this for a billion times, uh, in in about a year probably or a billion years even. Pero it also applies in relationships. You cannot say, oh, parang katulad ka ni Juan Tamad, aabangan ko mo, oy, mahulog ka na dito sa sabi mo doon sa bayabas, ngintay mo mo. Ito ay it it needs effort. Talagang uh, you have to exert effort in order to achieve all of this uh, or most of them. Okay? Talagang it takes time and effort. Next one. Ayaw na po. Ay, hindi. Napatay ko pala. Okay. How can intimacy be achieved? Tignan niyo po yung nakalagay sa King James Version. If I start, if I uh, look at this, yung, um, ko, ko, just as, as I am able to read it, kung yung ano, di ba? Face value, yung face value. Pag nakilala ko ba kayong lahat, especially yung mga nandito, will you start bearing children? No. But it says here, Adam knew his wife and she conceived. What's the point there? Uh, yung iba, talagang 
niliwanag na nila yung ibang translation. But I, I still like the King James Version translation. Why? It brings something important. You have to be close. You have to have that closeness and familiarity. Okay? Before you can really achieve that kind of intimacy. And before you can proceed with the next, or if you may allow, the next part of that intim intimate activity. Now, I'd like to share with you, biblical, I see them as biblical principles of sex. Uh, again, I was, I'm not saying that intimacy is all about sex, but you cannot talk about intimacy without this one because it's part of it. So now, what are now the biblical principles of sex? I won't go over this uh, in detail, but let me just share with you. Number one, it's about procreation. That's why God says, Go ye and multiply. Recreation. Do you think, uh, and it, this is, by the way, this is horrible when I was able to watch this. Do you know that, oh, I forgot that, um, I think it's in Kenya, in some tribes in Kenya, some Kenyan tribes, they circumcise young females. And it's so horrible. Some, uh, female, young, around 9 to 11 years old, would even die. Because for them, uh, it's sinful, okay? It's sinful for a woman to enjoy sex. That's what they believe. And so when this was shown to me by our professor at Ayas, and I was horrified, who would have thought such uh, such thing, Okay? Why am I sharing that? Recreation. Sex was meant for married couples to enjoy. Let me share with you some uh, way on how we can, ano, I, I, ano yan, I skip yung ibang part. For example, how do animals procreate? The chicken. Okay? Ano yung mga nag-aalaga ng manok? Do you think that the hen enjoys what's being done to her? I call this, uh, ano, sexual assault. Meron pang isa dyan. Do you think the cat is enjoying what's being done to her? I also, also call this assault. Okay? What about yung, mga is, yung tarantulas? Okay? There's a kind of tarantula na not all tarantulas do that. But there are some tarantulas. If you will observe, the male tarantula is smaller than the female tarantula. Okay? What the tarantula, male tarantula would do is that it will try to lure, okay, the female tarantula to come to him, and then it would try to hold the uh, front legs of the female tarantula, and it will try to, um, to use those uh, legs, his legs, to prevent the female tarantula from eating him, Okay? Because there are times that the female tarantula may eat the male. And then some spiders would even, after uh, the male spider is able to, uh, to uh, fertilize the eggs of the female tarantula, uh, that's the end of his life. And then the female tarantula will eat the male tarantula, I mean the male spider. What do you think? What if... Humans are like this. <laughs> uh, what about fish? I used to, uh, no, I used to raise and breed this kind of fish. This is called the um, uh, discus fish. Do you know how they, uh, how the male or how they mate? This is how they mate. The female would lay the eggs, and then afterwards, behind her is the male fish um, fertilizing the eggs. That's it. Okay, why did God implant in human beings, uh, uh, why did God make the sex for human beings something that the couple, married couples, can enjoy? If... Uh, because we are higher than the animals and God created us uh, uh, in His image. There's, I believe there's a uh, 
part of God's DNA was given to God's gift to man that humans can also enjoy. And I will tell you in a little while that is, okay? But let's go back, I know. Okay, so is it wrong to discuss sex? I call this a myth. But, okay, here's what. I believe, and there I was able to see this, I don't know, but I wasn't able to read it. I wasn't able to read it thoroughly. Okay? You own, uh, you own Lebroni Charles Wichibi. He said God invented sex. I believe so. Therefore, if God invented sex, it is holy and sacred. So it is not bad to discuss it, but we should discuss it with respect. With, uh, and... Uh, yeah, with respect, and we should consider that this is not, this should not be discussed in, like other topics that we commonly discuss. Diba? Because it is as sacred as God Himself, because this come, came from God. Okay? So, skip na natin iba rito. Okay, God has designed sex since it, is involved, it involves intimacy and accountability to be confined within marriage. It is God's gift to mankind when He instituted marriage and was intended for married couples to enjoy. Okay, so those are the three, procreation, recreation, and intimacy. Okay, uh, I'm going to go over this very fast because I would like you to have the discussion later on. Only husbands are in, interested in sex. I don't believe so. Uh, uh, I hope you will agree with me. I don't believe so. <laughs> And I guess the man will agree with me. Both the husband and wife have interest in sex since both want to be intimate with each other. Of course, niba. Right? There are actually health benefits. I got this from... Um, uh, I, I forgot to put the, uh, the source, the website where I got this. There are, I, I found seven benefits. Let's go over to them. And you who are probably not considering... Having this as often as you can, you can, you might want to reconsider, okay? For example, get less colds and boost your immune system. That's number one, okay? More sex equals fewer sick days, but it doesn't mean that you will just have that, okay? It doesn't mean that you will no longer take vitamins. That's not it. it does not, it's not a cure-all. Next one, it lowers your blood pressure. Oh, there are also health benefits, too. Okay, number three, counts as exercise. Like every other kind of physical activity, sex burns calories too. Okay, sitting and watching TV burns about one calorie for, per minute. Nakaburn rin pala ng calorie yung panonood ng TV. But having sex increases your heart rate and utilizes various muscle groups, burning about five calories per minute. But uh, five calories per ano? Okay. But you know, regular sex cannot replace sessions at the gym. But having an active one, it's healthy. Number three, lowers heart attack risk. Oh, so kung gusto niyo mabawasan yung, ata- yung risk niyo sa heart attack, try to consider this. And number five, I won't explain this. Alam na natin yan, mga kalalakihan. It may reduce prostate cancer risk. Number six, kung hindi kayo masyado makatulog, Sex can help you sleep better. <laughs> That's why, man, pagka hindi, nyo, hindi makatulog yung mga asawa nyo, sabihin nyo, may paraan ako dyan. <laughs> okay. Next would be, it relieves stress. Why? Sex is a great stress reliever. That's why if uh, you think na sobrang stress na sa trabaho, and then sasabihin mo, wag mo na ngayon, pagod ako, Ah, sobrang stress ko na think twice because that's because touching, hugging, sexual intimacy and emotional attachment stimulate the release of feel-good substances that promote bonding and calmness. Sexual arousal also releases substance, substances that simulate the reward and pleasure system in the brain. Fostering intimacy and closeness can also help relieve anxiety and boost overall health. Okay, so those are uh, yeah, the benefits. Now, myth number four. 
I think this is the last one, myth that I have. Men and women have the same sexual stimuli. I think you already discussed in previous topic that uh, emotionally, you know, and not just emotionally, but men and women have differences. Okay, we have differences. Sex can be likened to traveling. Pag nagta-travel kayo, and this is just my version, you know, uh, I was, uh, there are times na para bang iniisip ko para siguro kung ano, yung, uh, yung philosopher, katulad ng mga philosopher noon. How can I compare, where can I compare sex? Men are often, I have observed, are often interested with the destination, while me, women are interested with the journey. In what way? Why is it, okay, medyo SPG daw ang tawag dito sa susunod mga sasabihin ko. Why is it that women would uh, uh, consider first that the place is secured, the, kung maaari nga may mga bulaklak sa paligid, di ba? may mga petals. Samantala yung uh, some men, especially, not all, ano? Uh, men would often think, that, let's just get on with it. Di ba? Yeah. So, I have considered na in a lot of times, but not all times, Men are, and women should uh, also consider that, you know, should understand that. And men will also have to consider that. Para bang, uh, tagal-tagal mo naman, sabihin mo sa asawa mo, tagal-tagal mo naman, uh, matagal ka pa ba dyan? Sabihin nung asawa mo, teka lang, nagpapabuti pa ako. Okay? Again, we also need to consider that that's the, one of the differences that we have. Okay? But, what I can share with you on this is that, how about we meet at the middle? Okay? Can two walk together except they agreed? Or except they be agreed? That's in Amos 3.3. Uh, uh, That's why, how about sex on Sabbath? Are there still among you here who are not comfortable with this one? If you are in doubt about this one, Dr. Michael Campbell, my former professor at IAS, he had an article on this in the Ministry magazine. Basically, it's like this. It's okay to have sex on Sabbath. But, this is my version. Okay? This is my version. It's okay to have it Sabbath evening, Fridays, right? But, if after doing it, you become so exhausted, you no longer want to go to church, there's a problem. Okay? Later on, at the last part, I will tell you, since sex is a gift from God, there's a very important principle that we need to understand about it. This one. Sex, since it came from God as a gift, carries with it an important part of God's genetic, uh, of God's genes. Okay? Uh, I think uh, I missed that genetic imprint. Okay? And that is selflessness. In sex, it should be my spouse's needs and pleasure first than mine. Okay? You don't think about yourself because when you start thinking about yourself first in sex, that's idolatry. Again, that's idolatry when you think about yourself first. Because sex comes as a gift from God, then it brings with it His character. And what is that? Selflessness. But to complete selflessness in sex, it should be God first. And, we, and what will glorify His name? Then my spouse. Then finally, me last. So going back to sex and Sabbath, sex should glorify God. Okay? And if... That does not glorify God. Again, it's idolatry. Because it has to be Him first, your spouse next, and me last. I hope we learned something. These are my two cents regarding this topic. And uh, the guide questions, they're just guides. Okay? You can, I've observed that you are very good in discussing the important matters and uh, those guide questions are just guides. You can even uh, disregard them. What will, be, what will fit 
your groups in the discussion, I think that would be best. Thank you very much.